Hi, and welcome to Skyline Game Engine Gen 2. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at the material editor that's just been updated and is now usable. So I just wanted to run uh, through a few of the settings and features that we've got with it and show you a few materials. So we'll start with the usual proto blue that we've seen in the old version of Skyline. It's already edited, um, so let's just tweak a few settings to get our heads around things. At the minute, it's set as a non-metallic surface, but it's glossy, which is why you can see a reflection around the outside of the object, but not in the middle. This is known as Fresnel, or other people call it Fresnel. Um, Depending on whether it's metallic or non-metallic, the curvature of, if you can imagine a graph, uh, a non-metallic would be closer to zero, which is, as you're seeing, it looks like the diffuse or albedo in the center, and towards the grazing angle of the object will increase the Fresnel or Fresnel amount, creating a reflection. We can change this if we edit our roughness it blurs the image out and also removes that Fresnel. This is good for bricks, rock, wood, that sort of thing. And again, drop that down to a glossy, would be good for marbles, um, any glossy surface. But it's not metallic. If we swap this over to the metallic object, as you can see, we can make it go chrome, which will take the full reflection, and basically that is that Fresnel or Fresnel being reduced or set at one. Uh, there are two modes that you can work with inside Skyline. We have a specular and metallic workflow. They they do work differently and the textures they take do are different as well so when you're online and you're looking for a pbr material you need to know whether it's come from a metallic workflow or a specular workflow in order to it for it to look correct as you noticed when metallic mode is used this changes the metallic to become a zero or zero to one white or um black to white image or white or black and grey to be half metallic but you don't generally ever have a metallic object or non-metallic that is in between it either is metallic or is not metallic so essentially you would always have this slider at one or at zero and depending on the texture used you have to set the metallic to one zero a bit confusing <laughs> anyway the next thing to look at is the actual texture slots PBR can be used without any textures. Uh, for instance, we can remove all textures and it will create a white object. The color difference you're seeing there is the hemispheric ambience, which we can change from these settings here. See if we set that to a there and set that one to there, it will change accordingly. With the different, because we've took all the textures out, this will generate a different shader to the to a, a material that says hazard diffuse, or normal, or roughness, metallic, specular, or reflection, uh, which makes it very fast and very efficient, so it's only using resources that you're actually paying for. 
rather than like old Skyline where you, if you had the uber material applied you'd have to have a blank normal texture and a blank specular texture in order for it to look correct. This is not the case anymore. So let's just set these back in because we hadn't saved. We get back to our original settings without any problem. Leave that as glossy. So let's go create uh, an iron or a scuffed iron surface or a steel or something like that. let's duplicate this surface and we'll go create a new material let's name this iron scuffed when we when we've created a new material in the current version it does have a red um, red diffuse which won't happen in the version you end up with which it should come out looking like that. Let's just save that. One thing to be aware of, we have still called diffuse diffuse, but in fact with a PBR workflow, diffuse is an albedo. An albedo is a texture that can is is essentially the diffuse texture, but it has no lighting information. Because all the lighting settings are either handled in the shader or through the other textures like roughness and metallic which allow which change how the light interacts with the surface so to create this since we're just creating an iron we don't need a diffuse texture we're going to set that to blank that out for instance we could create even a black surface like that and then make that metallic and set a reflection and we should get full chrome at a roughness of low roughness should give us full reflection again changing the roughness value up to one will blur the image out create that rougher look and it will reduce, if it's non-metallic, it will reduce the Fresnel or the Fresnel, where it's pronounced. As you can see, when it's a non-metallic object, you can create that glossy surface look by just having a low roughness and whatever color so this is this could be good for paints or um, marbles as we've said before increasing the roughness again blur that out until it becomes value of one where we should just have a flat color with a rough specular over if I reduce the roughness there, you should see the specular exponent decrease and more of the glossiness coming back in. Essentially, zero is glossy, one is rough. So, back to creating this iron. We need a base color. And then we load in the map. But I think this normal map is blank with no information on it. Which if there's no information on it, we don't need to waste the performance on it and just remove it. But we will need a roughness texture. This is a microsurface and it changes how the specular is well it when you use a roughness texture 
you should set the roughness value to 1. And then in the roughness texture, black would be glossy and white would be fully rough. But you can reduce, if you find that your, your texture is not quite right, you can just tweak around with the settings to get it to look the way you need. And since this is a metal, we need to set it to a metal value. And it should start to look like something. Remember, this is a metallic object, so the specular should be the color of the surface of the metal, which in this case would be the same as the... And if you find that you just get an over-whitening on something, you can just reduce the specular value to, say, half. And now we have a rough metal. If we reduce the roughness, you should see it go back to a glossy, shiny metal. So let's set roughness at 500 and see what that looks like. Look up close, you can see all the roughness texture working. And let's go for about 800, a bit too much. 700, and now we have quite a nice looking scuffed metal. Let's create a copper. We'll go back into the material editor, press that, go into copper. And as you can see, we've got our colors, we've got our roughness, we've got our normal, everything to create this PBR copper texture. Let's call this copper scuff. And we'll do the same things again. But this time, let's work in a metallic workflow. First, you need to set the, the base color of the albedo. Um, since it's just a simple metal, we don't have an albedo or diffuse texture to give it any surface variation in color. So we can simply just use the base. Add our roughness map. Add the normal map. And set the metallic to 1. We load on our reflection. We should end up with coppery looking texture. Let's speculate to about half, which is a general purpose setting. And then increase the roughness. If you find that your roughness is at one, but it's not blurring out the way you want, then that's probably due to the fact of the roughness texture being incorrect. As you notice, this roughness texture is the same texture as the iron, um, but it's a darker texture. And if we compare the two, that one's quite white, which again, white is rough, black is glossy on this one, a roughness of one but a texture with information of black in it would still make it a glossy section. And just to proof this, let's just go create texture that we can show the difference.
Roughness textures are always monochrome. They, you can even create them with a grayscale image to save on memory bandwidth. So if we go in, into the Asset Manager, we go and add that texture into our resources and then load that onto the roughness channel. And you'll see that the white sections are very rough and the black sections are glossy. Load back on that ridge. If you find that your textures, if you can't get the image to blur correctly or just does not look correct, then try a different texture or different levels in the texture. So for this one, since it's the same texture as the iron, just go over to this one, copy that, load that onto that one, and you'll see that it completely changes the effect of the object. Set that color back. Right. Let's drop the roughness to say 800. And now that's looking quite nice. You can even download assets offline. Um, go get a model that has been designed with PBR and its material. Uh, for instance, this katana, uh, I downloaded it already, so I can show you how to set that up to look pretty much the same to the one online. If you locate it in your asset library, load the mesh in. You'll notice this one does not have a material so far. So we'll need to go create the material. Okay. Load that onto the object and begin editing the material. This came with a PBR set of textures. For instance, this is the albedo channel. As you can see, it's a texture with no lighting information, just pure color. And this model was designed in a metallic workflow. So the first thing we'll need to do is swap over to the metallic workflow. Drop on the base color, which should give us the, the objects color information, which as you can see is now just lit in the scene, but there's no normals, no roughness, and it doesn't look very shiny. We apply the other textures, say the normal, set the normal to one. Starting to get the, the grooves in the handle. And add on the other bits. So let's add the roughness. And add Alec. And because it's a sword, it will need to be a metallic object. Set that to one. It's starting to get a bit more of a bringing it to life. There's one thing we're now missing to finish this off which is a reflection texture. Let's reduce our roughness to say again, 800. Now we have quite a nice surface, which should be pretty close to the object and the image we saw online.
if not a little bit too black in specular. If we grab our specular and just one, reduce the roughness a bit. Of course, we don't have the same direction on our light as the image and all that, but it, it generally does look the same. Shadows make it a bit better quality. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we are so far. There are some good resources online to learn PBR from. Uh, one of these is the Marmoset Toolbag 2. And they've got a tutorial which basically goes through what PBR is. And settings that certain material types use. Which is always good reference for when you're trying to pull a surface together. Hope you enjoyed looking at that. Thanks for watching. I forgot to mention about Skyline's alpha values that we have in Skyline Gen 2 now. Uh, we've got a couple of different options, but pretty much the same as what we had in Gen 1. So to start, I've created another object and I'm going to add on a leaf material. we look at the materials we notice that the specular does not work for the roughness because the roughness is white rough black glossy so if we remove that and then we can play around and try and get the bit plant like surface Okay, save that. If we head over to this top tab, which was the same on the older material editor, uh, we have the same settings. We have reject with a slider threshold, which is 0 to 255, and the alpha for the texture is stored in the alpha channel of the diffuse map or albedo map. We also have double sided. Let's just go tweak that. As you can see, how the roughness and the glossiness work with the plant life now. For leaves and that sort of thing, we are uh, going to implement a backward, um, the backside translucency, um, so you can get the leaves to look like they should in a scene, rather than having these black faces on the polygons, which looks a bit strange at times. If we disable the double-sided. I um, think there's just an error with the material editor that it's not returning some settings at the minute, so that's why they're, they're not the same. But if we play with Alpha Blend at the top, you can see it does the standard make it fade. And one being full opaque to fully translucent. The other type we have is glass. Now this creates a fresneling around the edge of the object. 
which is great for car windows or building windows or well, anything like that and as you can see even when the value alpha blend hits zero you still get highlighting around the edge sort of like a rim light and this really helps on things like car windows because it gives you that um, nice reflection which I'll show you in a minute and just setting the value back to one on either mode will just set the settings back to no alpha so if we save that with rejection and double sided there we go so as I was saying before with the glass if we add in the track car you can see that it's, the car is already set up with the shader and you can see when you look down the grazing angle of the car that you have the, the nice reflection that you'd expect and you also have it on the window and this is due to that glass shader part So if we edit the material and go to the glass part, and set, set that to 1, you see that you have the standard white, and if we just change the diffuse to white, take off double sided and then reduce you see that the, the window still exists even at those other angles whereas it, if we set it to standard when the value hits zero the whole window will disappear which is not useful but you activate glass and it creates that edging but obviously when you look directly at the surface it's not going to have that Fresnel or Fresnel so you do need to have part of the value on in order for it to look correct you can increase the specular by changing the specular color which really strengthens the the glass look which looks pretty damn good <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching Hope you're enjoying seeing Skyline Gen 2 being developed and see you in the next video.